All right, how's it going, everyone? So let's go ahead and uh, get some some serious work done on this guy. I'm <laughs> feeling just about ready to start really wrapping this project up. Uh, it's been it's been quite a while, and uh, realistically, even though it looks like we still have quite a bit to do, uh, it really isn't too too much. Um, I think we spent a lot of time sort of focusing on nitty gritty details, and we can always come back to that. I think right now it might just be better to start doing some more uh, broader strokes and, and filling in some of these pieces. Uh, in the last part, I did like a sped up version where I apply this material we made to a bunch of the uh, miscellaneous pieces surrounding the uh, the inside here. And I think what we're going to do here is um, do as best as we can to flesh out everything else. The thing is, um, a lot of these guys, like a lot of these internal pieces and a lot of the pipes and uh, knickknacks here and there are also just going to be copies from other materials. A lot of the interior stuff, uh, if we look at our reference... Um, shares a material with uh, kind of like the keys like this stuff seems to be the same we can see this being the same as this um, that might not have been the best example more more akin to like this so they seem to be the same so we can just sort of copy that over and do some basic adjustments um, there isn't too many new new things that we have to add in uh, but let's just sort of tick through this little by little uh, what I want to do actually is um, first of all, these two little guys, uh, we haven't included that in our plastic old yet, and this should be a, a pretty quick and easy sort of thing. I'm literally just going to add this uh, to our plastic old mask, and um, we can do our slight little adjustments to them. Shouldn't really require uh, too, too much work. Um, they're really tiny areas, and I do believe that we, we stacked these guys, so we're just going to want to make sure that we don't make it look too... Uh, mirrored so we're not going to add any like super unique damage to it but even like from what I can tell it looks like mostly all right already like that's not really a far cry from what we're going for here uh, let me just switch back to our mold brushes I just don't like how that one big dot is very noticeable um, just because it's mirrored and there's a chance that it's like something you can spot out as a, a duplicated uh, piece. So let me just try and find out exactly which one of these layers houses that. So it's somewhere in this. It's not dirt, it's not mud, it's not leaking, stains. It is stains. Okay, we can go to the paint layer for that guy. Put him down to black, paint that out. And all things considered, I really don't think we need to change too much. We do have a very obvious texture seam here. Uh, that's strange. I feel like I would have wanted to put the seam a little lower, but I guess I put it there. We can either rotate that in the model itself. Um, or we can notice that it's coming from this leaking layer. And I'm just going to paint that out completely. And it should be fine. The dust is a little much. Uh, I don't know exactly what layer this is. Let's see if it's in this one. Yeah. Dirt. Stain. Scratches. Sun fade. Yes, yeah, the sun fade. I think it's a little intense if you ask me so I'm just gonna scrub this out look at it from all angles got some very noticeable roughness spots there which looks very mirrored uh, I'm not gonna like that so let's see if that's in plastic old which it is um, and once again just trying to find out exactly what layer belongs to black spots um, we can add a paint layer here. Just really paint that out. And yeah, now they're looking pretty good. Can't tell that they're symmetrical. And uh, that's all I was really looking for with uh, that layer there. Now, one of the things I want to focus on right now, and I think it's going to sort of add a lot, is this gigantic plastic uh, middle roller part. Um, I really want to start filling in the scene a little bit more and that's uh, definitely one of the components we're going to need for that. So we're noticing this kind of lined pattern. There's there's 
two kind of main references I like for this. This one's a very uniform line, as if it's part of the texture itself. And this one is some sort of like linear scratches. Um, we can try we can try out both and see how they turn out. Uh, I'm mostly going to start by copying this plastic though. Uh, so we can just copy layers, and I'm just going to paste them in here, just because this will probably need its own special treatment. Um, and I shouldn't just, you know, mimic it one-to-one uh, -one and, and just sort of like try and uh, save layers or anything like that. We really don't need to for any reason here. And this is such a, a massive part of the, the model. We might as well give it some extra tender love and care. Um, let's see. Uh, before we do that, though, I'm just turning that off. I also, if we're doing these plastic pieces, I just want to do these ones really quick. We'll get back to that guy in just a second, but I'm literally just doing what we did on the other rollers and applying that here. I'm assuming that sun fade is, uh, yeah, it's the sun fade that's going a little crazy and probably one of these dirt layers. Oh, no, it's something up here. Dust seems to be a bit much. I'm just going to tone it down a bit. And that'll do it. It also seems like we never included this little section in the metal. Good thing we caught that. Um, It'll be easier to catch this stuff when we're supposedly done, because then we can just sort of switch to our F1 view, look through here, and if anything is white and sticking out, it'll be very, uh, very obvious. But if we can catch it as we go, it's kind of nice to pick that up. Uh, so anyway, anyways, uh, where were we? We were trying to get to this big piece. So I gave it its own layer. I'm gonna call this plastic roller. I believe that would be kind of a fitting title for this. Uh, we can add a black mask to it. And then select this so we can get it to apply. So let's make sure we get the whole thing. I'm not expecting this material to be, you know, what we want it to be right off the bat. It's uh, definitely, you know, color and the matteness of it is correct, but it's way too dirty. We're not getting those sort of rolled looks to it so let's just turn everything off and do our typical work our way up um, we have the base we have the base variation base variation doesn't seem to be doing too much what was this doing before just some scuffs yeah if i turn the contrast down i kind of like having some variation to it like so. Cool with that. Okay. Uh, but what I'm really trying to look for is these like directional patterns. Let's try this here. I don't know if we'll have a texture by default inside of um, substance that will let us get that, but we can we can give it a shot. I'm gonna add in fill layer and call this lines. Uh, we can of course add our black mask in, and we can try out a fill. So I'm adding a fill to that. And I'm immediately drawn to this because it's very linear, but this is more akin to that kind of scratchy style of lines. I wonder if there's just like some kind of lines or linear pattern. I mean, I guess this kind of, if we scale it up maybe a bunch, like 50 times, line width. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Line quantity. We're getting a bit of a space between things. So I wonder if I change the scaling, we might be able to get a different look.
No, we'll keep this locked. Let's go for like 100. Rotate it 90 degrees. And yeah, we're just getting this odd spacing. Very strange. I wonder if I can turn this up further. Or maybe if we turn this down to like a single line like this. Line width. Okay. Um... Interesting. It's there's got to be a way to sort of get this to be like this. Uh, let's let's try and right click and add a filter, and I think I might have an idea. There should be a filter called bevel, which I think lets us, yeah, kind of like broaden things out a little bit, kind of like how you'd bevel something when modeling. And we could do something. I'm just trying to make the, the gaps in the lines themselves like evenly distributed. A little bit more than this. Maybe 0.28. Something like that. Smoothness is not something I want. Uh, and we're getting hit with an autosave, but um, I think you can kind of see what I'm going for. We're getting these lines, they're evenly spaced. We could probably use a levels to sharpen this up a little bit. And from there we could um, essentially scale it up quite a bit, get that lines, use it as like a, a subtle height dip and a roughness variation. Uh, some way to sort of get that difference. And then from there we can use the other layers that we have to kind of get that exact um, look that we're going for. See, like this is something that we could have modeled in, but opting it, opting to sort of leave it um, for for Painter uh, will probably end up saving us a ton of time in the long run because um, we've essentially almost completed it the way it is. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and let this save and do its thing, and uh, we will dive right back into it. Okay, let's continue. Uh, I'm going to scale this. Uh, a little bit more. We can go ahead and scale it like 300. Um, it peaks at 128. I wonder if we change the line quantity and then lower the bevel. No, it's not what we're trying to do. Bend intensity, no. Um, hmm. What if we add another fill to this where we kind of mimic the same thing. So I'm going to try and add a fill. Put it down here, set it to overlay. Um, get the same effect. Maybe not overlay, there's a certain blending multiply, I think is the one. And I just offset it by 0. a little bit and we can kind of like get it to be somewhere in the middle. So there's one, let's offset it by 0. 0.5, line quantity. Hmm. Screen. Oh, so we haven't turned the scale up. That's what's going on. Okay, so we can probably send this back to multiply. Hmm.
trying to like get it to be in the middle a little bit. What if we just sort of experiment with some of these pass through seems to be one that's working at least it's doing something. Hmm. You know, let's get rid of that. But what we will do is we'll mix these lines with kind of the scratchiness and maybe we'll get some interesting shapes out of it. So let's add in another fill. What I'm going to do is get this uh, kind of noise here. Scale it up way high. Maybe not totally that high, maybe like 50. Rotate it 90 degrees. Turn the balance down. Oh, we're gonna put this above the bevel and that's what's making it look so crazy. So this is this kind of like linear noise. Uh, we can turn this down a little bit more actually. And we can set this to multiply. So it's sort of going along with the uh, the sort of dips that we had in there. We'll lower the opacity on that a little bit. Uh, but then I'm going to add another one. Add fill. This one's going to be the same thing. I still, I like that look, but it was just a bit too much before. And I'm just going to send this to Kind of, I want it to be in the background. So I'm just going to set it to normal actually. And then I think we could just lower the opacity on it. So we're still getting that kind of ribbed look. And I think we might be able to do some cool stuff with this. Uh, let's see if we affect the height. So we go minus 0 0.01. What this looks like. The color itself, I'm going to want it to be very minimal. But we're, we're getting that same banding actually that we're getting here. It's it's pretty similar. Uh, I might want to change it to be a bit more of like a dusty color. We can give it a bit more of a yellow. Brighten it up. Add some saturation. The uh, the height information is doing a lot, as is the roughness. Let's take a look at our roughness view, actually. And we can see that it is uh, poking through quite a bit, which is exactly what we want it to be doing. Get some nice variation in there. It's doing a pretty solid job of being a good foundation. Lower that saturation level a bit. Maybe two is better opacity for it. Um, less saturation. And I might want to just add in a filter and a warp just because it might look a little too uniform. So I'm going to turn this way down. I still want it to be very directional. But something with some wobbles in it. So let's go with like a 0.2. Get some interesting shapes in there. Uh, it still seems very obvious. I'm not sure if it's the height that's a little bit too intense. Let's try and turn that down a bit. Cut it in half. The opacity is still a bit much. I want it to be like very subtle. 
Um, and I think that's about what we want. Let me make it brighter in that case. But yeah, getting very linear results from it. We might come back and, and turn it up later. In fact, you know what? Let's leave it at two for now. Um, but we can always change it later. And then let's let's go through the rest of these layers and see if we can get this to be a little bit more uh, matching with what we want. We got this plastic old, which we turn that on and immediately we're getting bombarded with layers upon layers of grime. Not all of these we're going to be needing, right? So let's sort of work our way up. We have old yellow, uh, what is this? Shades. Just some aging to it. Um, yeah, I'm going to turn off the roughness on it, but just some solid Subtle uh, color variation, never really hurt anyone. Stains, some random splotches. Uh, it looks a little bit messy if we're just going off of this. So I'm going to have to adjust it a little bit. Like a splotch like that out of nowhere seems a bit strange. Uh, if anything, I'd want to crank it like this, turn the contrast down, and then like nuke the opacity on it. Maybe contrast up a bit. Uh, and then from here we can kind of play with the roughness, right? Kind of get like a base layer of grime over everything. Color is a little strange in my opinion. So I might just darken it a bit. Sun fade. I mean, it, it's like a solid dirt, but it's really not the direction that the sun would be. Uh, so I'm gonna turn it way down. And the roughness. Let's actually switch over to roughness and just sort of lower the opacity of it. I don't mind there being roughness variation, but at this intensity, uh, it's a little bit much um, for my taste specifically. So let's let these load in for a second. Uh, I don't want to do anything that might cause some kind of crash. Uh, it doesn't seem like it needs to be loading anything. So let's lower this down to like 25% opacity. It's going to load for a second and yeah we're getting some grime on the front i like the location of it i like that there's a some like some variation it's not too intense that's good uh speaking of crashing we haven't saved in a while so i'm gonna go ahead and hit save on this now and uh i'll regroup with you guys in just a second okay uh scratches Let's turn on this layer. I think it's got quite a few things in here, so we can kind of just sort of dig through them. Uh, nothing immediately... Oh, sorry, I'm thinking of something else, but we are still getting some things here, which I'm liking. Um, this main layer is giving us some actual surface scratches, which we are seeing sprinkled throughout. I think, though, that they should be a bit smaller and a bit more spread. So let's dive into this layer. Uh, we can turn the tiling up to maybe 10, the balance, we can turn down a little bit, just kind of like place throughout. Let's take a look at what the layer itself is doing. Uh, we could probably push the actual height of it a bit more. So I'm going to make it, have them cut in a little bit deeper. Uh, the roughness, I would imagine we can see that which is nice i might even push that a little bit more and it's really not too too much to these guys the opacity we have it as a kind of a, a light gray might just slide that up a, a notch um, but that's that's good we also have these scratches I don't know if they're targeting the side or what they're doing. If I can't notice them, I'm not going to keep them on. Uh, just in case they're doing something I don't like. So we'll, we'll just keep these main scratches. And I'm cool with that. Black spots. This seems to be some kind of random dusty, dirty variation. Uh, which I'm cool with. 
I just think the color itself should be turned down and the roughness has them being noticed a little bit too easily. We're, we're starting to get these, like we have them present in our reference. Uh, if anything, I might want them to be a little brighter like that. Kind of defeats the name black spots, but it is what it is. Uh, stains, okay. Got this kind of scratch layer. Um, if I'm going to be doing something like this, I'm going to want the tiling to be higher, but the opacity to be a lot lower, as well as the roughness to be less obvious. Like, I still think this is a little, a little overkill. Uh, the color as well, not the biggest fan of. Might just lower the saturation and the brightness on it. It's adding some variation, like it's, it's nice. Make it very, very subtle. Uh, leaking. Leaking. I'm seeing a bit of it around these edges. I don't mind that actually. I kind of kind of think that makes sense in this scenario. I might turn the variation up a little bit. Turn the level up. Turn the length up. Interesting. So, okay, this explains a lot. Uh, it's using the wrong axis as it's up and down. It's probably what the sun fade was doing too. Uh, I guess we want Z to be up and down, which is strange. That's not how we typically do things in Maya. And also in here, Y is up and down. I don't know why uh, it's doing that. Um, but either way, this will help with that a bit. So we have some leaking height. Uh, if we're going to add any, I want it to be very minuscule. Roughness can go up, but the base color, I want it to be very subtle. This look still isn't doing it for me a ton. Maybe turn the contrast down, turn the length up. Turn the variation down a little bit. Then we're getting this stuff. But if I'm not mistaken, we can't ever see any of this, so I'm not too broken up about it. And we can always erase it later. Let's take a peek at the other side. Essentially the same thing. The roughness is a little obvious. I'm going to tone it down. The color I might make more. Eh. More like so. Okay. Uh, mud. This is just going to be some more grime. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. Dirt, little speckles, yeah. I think this is uh, something that's needed. I think a bit brighter though. And we can turn down the opacity of that. Uh, the amount of it is also quite a lot. So let's kind of tone down the balance a little bit. So we're just getting kind of these odd little speckles here and there. Okay. Then we got our custom stuff. So we have dust. Seems to be very targeted towards the nooks and crannies. Um, it's a bit intense here. So I might just paint out some of that. It's targeting near the bottoms, which is 
ideal. Probably in here as well. The other side. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, dust ring. And white specs. Okay, so there's definitely some changes I want to make to this. The first thing is the actual base. I think we could probably do with making a bit darker. Uh, let's go back to what we had, but a little touch darker and a little less saturated. I'm going to turn the roughness up on it a little bit as well. Then for this lines layer, uh, I think I'll kick the roughness up a bit, but the opacity desaturate and I'm just going to set to one, just mega subtle. Like when you change the, the lighting, you notice it because of the height and roughness, but I don't want there to be actual color information in there. Uh, I do want another layer though. We can call this lines grunge. Can add a black mask to this guy as well, and as you guessed it, a fill layer. Uh, we are going to put this guy back on, rotate him, scale him up, and just sort of use this as a uh, nothing to do with color but just kind of like a roughness overlay. <clears throat> just giving it some more direction to it all. Um, maybe color. If it's super, super modest. Uh, and maybe I kind of want to mess with changing the scale. If I unlock it, maybe I can make it super thin. Like some super thin lines here. I think that's really good for the roughness as well. Yeah, that's, that's definitely akin to what I'm trying to go for. Uh, and there's one thing that I do want to add to this as well. So there's a smart material, and it comes equipped with a really nice preset uh, dust that I really, really like. Um, I'd like to have some sort of top dust sort of running along this. Uh, I believe the material is called tank, or like painted tank metal, or something along those lines. Um, so I'm going to type in tank. And we're going to be applying it on top, uh, but we're just going to be ripping essentially one material out of it. So let's put this guy on. It's going to look stupid uh, until we make our adjustments, but uh, let's just sort of take a look at what exactly we get out of this. Probably something a little strange. Yeah, so it's a painted tank, right? Uh, all we really want is dust and maybe edgeware. I'm just going to rip both of these out. I don't know about edgeware, but I think we could definitely maybe afford some of that on here. Uh, but we can delete the rest of this. And let's turn off dust. I just want to look at edgeware and see if this is something I'd consider. Uh, definitely not. No. But we have this dust. So the dust itself has a mask to it. You can turn it up. It's going to be applying dust. I still think it's unsure of which way is up. Uh, let's see if we can change that. Uh, position gradient, world space normal, curvature, ambient occlusion, texture 2, attributes, uh, 
Random mode invert. Position gradient. World space normal. Curvature. Interesting. So it's not going from top down as I kind of was hoping it would. But maybe we can still get some good use out of it. One of the things is it's uh, way too way too high right now. Uh, we gotta take that height and turn it way down. I'm actually gonna switch over to the height layer. We can do just that. Let's turn this down to one. I like the the dust having some sort of height to it, but just very subtle. Maybe two. Um, the thing going back to base color, we're going to have to really tone this down, right? I want it to look dusty, but not like overly dusty. And maybe even having it here where it's kind of hard to reach does actually make sense. Uh, maybe that is the right call. Let's try tiling it a few more times to get some interesting noise. Yeah, I think it is kind of cool, actually. Um, see if we can mess with some of these histogram positions to get the kind of dust that we want. Okay, see the gradient, this is going to be our color. Could probably crank up the saturation a little bit more. Not too crazy, but could definitely be a little bit more dusty. And then turn it down. And I think that's more or less the rolly part done uh, for us. I guess if we rotate our camera or our light here, it's a little intense on the dust. So I'm going to turn that down quite a bit, actually. But, like, it's adding a lot for us, eh? Kind of mess with the saturation while we're looking at it. Uh, I kind of want to turn up some of these speckles. I'm going to go back to these black spots. And I'm going to want to add in a few more of them. I kind of like what they're doing. Yeah, this dirt is... It's a lot. I think we're getting a little out of hand with it. Can tone that down. And then with the roughness, that's probably what's making it pop so much. Can turn that down as well. I like how we're still getting those lines poking through. And I think that's that's more or less the roller uh pretty much done. I'm just going to really make sure I'm not going too far with some of these things. Tone it back. Okay. Cool. So that's that. Let's go ahead and save. And what we're going to be doing uh, next is kind of these interior parts. Uh, a lot of them are just copied over from the, the uh, keyboard material. So I'm just going to essentially uh, rip them from there, put them in, and uh, we can do some sort of touch-ups and adjustments. And uh, shouldn't take too, too long to do that, and we'll fill up a lot of the interior. All right, so, like I said, we're going to be ripping a material from our keys. So let's go ahead and turn off this layer, go to our keys layer, and dive into that. It's going to be this black 
uh, material, but I think I might actually want to do some subtle adjustments to them before we actually um, rip them over. We want to keep things consistent, right? So let's let's see if there's some things we can do to them uh, to kind of improve them first. So switching over to this other layer, of course, it's going to take a second. Uh, I also am going to be wanting to switch this to um, 4K just to sort of make sure we can really see what we're doing here. So let's let this do its thing. This is, of course, scary knowing how the chances of this just exploding is uh, a lot higher when things are using 4K textures. So fingers crossed here. But we'll see. It's been quite a while since we've been working on this guy, eh? so there's bound to be some kind of uh, changes that we want to kind of ground everything together uh, a little bit more. Um, but I still think the keycaps and the spacebar and all that are, are pretty good. It was always the interior that was kind of the questionable part of this anyways. So, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at some reference. I mean, it is pretty dark, pretty gray, pretty matte. If anything, I might just want to make our shiny paint a little less shiny. How's it going, everyone? So I've kind of got us back to where we were after that crash. Um, we're just sort of inside the keys material. Uh, all I did was sort of roughen it up a little bit. Uh, it crashed before I could really show that off too much. The only other thing I want to do before we copy this over is get this sort of gradient in here. I like how there's this sort of dusty, dirty gradient. Uh, we can achieve that pretty quickly. Uh, Top-down gradient is, is fairly easy to do. Uh, we're just going to add in a fill layer, add a black mask to this guy. We can then from here add a generator. And it's actually a generator called 3D Linear Gradient. Uh, and if we sort of mess with this and maybe turn the contrast up a little bit more, you'll notice that we can get like from a top down view. So let's turn the contrast up even more. Have it be kind of top down like so, so we can get some dust caking onto here. Uh, I can call this uh, gradient dust. Um, and all I'm really looking to do is add kind of like a brown to it. Getting that similar look. Uh, could probably saturate it more in that case because we are going to be lowering the opacity on it and turning up the roughness. Uh, the thing is, I don't want this to be affecting everything, so I'm also going to add a uh, paint layer to this guy. And let's just go ahead and mask out things that we're not going to be including here. Uh, those are going to be kind of like this whole front area. Uh, I'm not going to want these to be part of it. Um, so I'm actually going to use just the polygon mode and just sort of select the whole front. And then with these guys, uh, I'm also not going to want them to be included. So I'm just going to deselect those. And we'll just sort of get it on these uh, side pieces exclusively. Might want it to be a little bit more orangey. And uh, yeah, definitely getting a nice gradient on that. Uh, I think that'll do for this. So we can now just getting a look at everything really quick. Even with this stuff on a super low res, it's still coming out pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and copy, just making sure this is right, this metal. Right click, copy layers. Uh, I'm also going to lower this to 1K now that we're not on it. Uh, so there's a lot less uh, intensive um, 
you know, stuff being loaded into our RAM. We don't need that. We can go back to the inside. Let's just isolate that guy. Give it a moment to kind of load in and do its thing. And we'll be uh, essentially applying this to most of the uh, the things that are going on in there. We might want to be adding additional layers on top, but for now it's just going to be uh, a direct copy and paste, and then we can kind of take it from there and see uh, what additional bits of work we can do. So, give it some time. I really don't want to rush things here with Painter being as, as delicate as it really is. Um, just going to let it do its thing. It'll slowly but surely get us there. Okay, so we found our way back to where we were. Let's sort of close out of all this stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and plop this guy up top. And uh, once it's in, we're going to save. Hopefully this doesn't cause any kind of crashes again. Because um, what it's going to have to do is, is really do a lot of calculations to get the masks and all that up to speed. So fingers crossed. But uh, yeah, I will just let this go and do its thing. Okay, so we got these guys in. And as you can see, they've kind of applied, but in random places. That's just because of the, the mask that we're applying it with is based off of a color selection that we don't have and a paint layer that is essentially um, going off of uh, a non-existent UV sheet that we have here. It's just sort of displaying uh, overlaid onto whatever this UVs look like, so it's incredibly inaccurate, so we can get rid of that as well. Keep this as a black mask, and we can just sort of go in and manually select uh, what we're going to be having as part of this. So I actually turn this up to white. It's going to be all these interior pieces. As you can see, I added a bit of variety in here with this stuff. I didn't want it to be all silver or all black. Getting a white ring there, very interesting. Just some sort of rendering glitch. Get that going through, very nice. Uh, this guy as well. And what's really nice about these guys is it's uh, all mirrored over to the other side, so things will be going by a lot faster once we start painting this stuff in. Uh, we'll have to be be sure to sort of stamp out the areas that have screws in them, though. Might be easy to forget about that. Uh, let's actually just confirm. Yeah, this base is all one piece of metal. The uh, the disc thing here, though, might be a little bit different. Uh, we can also confirm that this is all one piece. The same sort of metal to it. Just sort of include... what we can in here. Okay. Um, this I'm going to make it a different metal. We'll get all that. Uh, these guys as well were actually a different material. And I noticed that there is an issue right here. Uh, we can cover that up actually with geometry. Um, when we are done texturing, I can just sort of take the end of one of these pipes, like something like this or something like this, and just like literally cover it with geo, and it's going to solve our uh, problem. So, really not worried about that. 
Um, right, I gave these guys their own texture space because they were so small. But in hindsight, <laughs> even though, yeah, I can make them unique, it's just kind of a pain to, uh, to texture them all. Probably should have just made them all the same. But, like, we had, like, little bits of extra texture room, so it was just like a why not sort of thing. Uh, that guy as well, so we'll see part of the same bar. This here. Um, right. This stuff is all part of the same texture. This guy as well. Don't want to include that end. I'm just trying to pick up all these little rings. So there'll be a decent amount of work to do with this. I'm just trying to make sure I can mask it all right now. Uh, these guys as well. The springs, they're going to be part of this. Uh, let's get some more side reference. Seems like all the stuff in here is in fact uh, sharing the same material. Just this kind of dark, dark black material. Same with this. Uh, the back parts as well. The back parts actually, if I can find a reference for it, are interesting because yeah it's like this gray and it's a different tone than the part that's attached to the actual frame um, so I'm going to try and include all of that <laughs> if I can find a way to like select it all in one go but maybe that's not going to be possible. We'll have to settle for a kind of a few big swoops in here. I think that's all of it. I can already tell I'm going to want to make uh, quite a few adjustments to this stuff. Uh, we have this back plate here. We're going to have some changes in here that we're going to want to make. Um, but for the most part it is, uh, it is the same material. This is something different. This is actually the same material as the frame. This is part of this metal which I'll get to uh, later. The spring is also part of this metal so we'll have to do that. Um, these guys, though, are part of this dark interior. Uh, and I think I might include the bar, this horizontal bar that sort of pokes through all of this. A uh, small spring as well. I gotta say, the springs turned out a lot nicer than I uh, originally expected them to. Um, they're by no means perfect, but they're, they're pretty accurate. We have this screw, which I'm going to uh, add to the screw layer. Uh, we haven't used the screw layer yet since we've opened it, so it's just going to take a little bit longer to sort of warm that up. So let's just go ahead and let that uh, do its thing. Okay, back to this metal. And right, we actually did make these two uh, separate pieces.
this front guy. I'm not sure what material he is. Let's bring up our reference. He is kind of like this, yeah, this dark matte material. I think I might throw him in as well. I might just make the pin a different color. And then, of course, these caps uh, are just going to be ripped from the cap material. Of the uh, of the keys themselves. Um, is there anything else that is using this? No, these two guys are taken care of. This. This one I might do something like this. And then make this like the screw material or something. Um, as for this, this bearing is going to be something different. I want to say that is... all of it um so yeah let's save and then we'll dive into actually building up this material uh, a little bit better and a little bit more accurately all right so uh, the first thing i'm going to want to do before we do anything too crazy is just start by masking out um those screws since we're we're going about all this the manual way right so just turning this down finding these screws And proceeding to just do a kind of stamp out technique. Uh, I know we've already gone over this. This part really isn't the most informative, but we're going to be needing to do this uh, for all these parts. Uh, lucky for us, some of it is mirrored, so it's probably not going to take as long as it may otherwise have uh, taken. I'm noticing it difficult to do like subtle size increases of my brush sometimes um does this guy have any more yes there is these tiny minuscule parts which we also need to now go to the screw layer and fill in like so back to the metal Okay, we have up here, and the bottom, which <laughs> might be a little bit easier to do from one of these angles. Seems we've also forgot about this guy when it comes to the uh, screw layer itself. Fill it in like so. Okay. Uh, where else did we have screws? This stuff seems to all be good. There was this area here. Really liking how that looks actually. Um, gonna want to continue that back actually because this would be part of that as well. We're thinking about how that would actually be set up. So then the screw, the poke all the way through. Okay, we did forget to. Move that there. Um, definitely forgot about this. OK, 
Okay. We also forgot to add this. So this is essentially just a pass to make sure we're having our masks be as uh, properly set up as we can. Once again, this is just the result of not having uh, an ID map for this third um, texture set. Okay, fill this back in with the screw. Really missed a lot of these backsides on our first pass through here, but not the biggest deal in the world. Um, this back area has quite a few parts that we're going to have to mask out. Start with those two. Get some of these bigger guys. Actually, switch to our polygon shell selector here and uh, chunk out some of these more solid areas. Put our screw materials on these guys. Okay, sweet. Um, got these little parts here. Okay, um, I think that does that part. Back here, it's a bit more complex. Uh, yeah. So these balls obviously aren't going to be um, kind of metal but I still like the background being that metal and I like the grind being that metal so I'm just going to manually mask them out it's not the most perfect job but this uh, this part is very hidden so I'm not too torn up about it. Just trying to complete this ring. And then the screws might be the... Yeah, like a nice shiny bearing metal. We can definitely reuse this here. And like I said, like it's not the most perfect job, but you really can't tell. Just using some masks, getting those bearings in there, uh, looking real nice. Okay, so if there's any areas we missed, we'll catch them as we go. But let's go ahead and actually start messing with this metal and uh, 
kind of turn these layers off one by one, work our way up. Um, we don't want to change things too, too much. We still want them to be pretty uniform with um, like the interior parts, but they'll definitely need a little bit of work. So paint is given some kind of mask by default and some paint options. Uh, we obviously don't want this paint because that's being dictated by a different UV mask or a different UV channel rather. Uh, this grime is a little weird. I was hoping it's like some kind of edge damage, but it doesn't seem to be like that. So we can do a little bit better. We can probably go and find a smart mask that does edge damage really nicely. So I'm just going to type in edge, uh, strong edge, edge strong, scratched. Yeah, we can give that a shot. Paint would be chipping because of scratched reasons. Uh, and it seems to be inverted. We want the edges to be the kind of paint chip. So let's turn it way down. Invert. I'd want the contrast up on this a lot. And yeah, all I'd want out of this is like these little silver linings from things, right? Yeah, areas like that are not really what I'm going for. This might not be the best mask for it. Maybe um, paint. Some kind of painted edge. Paint old cracks. Paint subtle scratched. Yeah, that sounds uh, pretty up our alley, doesn't it? So, immediately I like the grunge and the intensity a bit more. Uh, but obviously we're going to want to tone this way down. Uh, we have these fill layers that are probably affecting things a bit. Let's turn the contrast down. We have these textures that are sort of muddying things up. And then these kind of random scratches here. I'm not totally opposed to the idea as long as we can make it maybe tile a little bit more. Maybe tile it by 10 and turn the balance down so it's more like a, a random subtle scratch across everything. As for this one, it seems to be, once again, scaled very weirdly. If we turn it up quite a bit, maybe even more. We might be able to get some nice scratches across things. But even then, I might just turn the opacity on it down. Um, yeah, like this looks very forced. But some areas also look really nice from this. So... I'll keep it for now and then we can sort of like paint on a piece by piece basis. Um, the paint itself, I want to lower the roughness on a little bit and kind of brighten a little bit too. It seems very dark. Saturation can just completely drop that almost. Just need to brighten that a bit. Kind of like this matte dark paint is uh, what I'm going for. Just don't want it to be too, too dark. Uh, surface imperfections. Let's see what that brings to the table. Very subtle. Uh, Right, the sort of height paint bumps. 
3.02 might be a kind of good spot for that and then I might want to tile it a little bit more uh, tile the mask itself that is just some bumps on things speckles um, probably don't need as much we already have quite a few scratches we added in scratches uh, once again this is kind of like on an inside piece so there really isn't going to be as many scratches in there so I don't mind having some but just very little cake to dirt this is definitely one that I'm going to like quite a bit some color variation some warmth some blobbiness uh, I'm going to turn the scaling down though I want it to be more sporadic and random and bigger shapes um, I think this is giving us some roughness variation. Uh, no, not really, but we can. We can get it to give us some roughness variation. I think that's probably a good call, as well as maybe to make it a bit brighter so we notice it a little bit more. I'm going to kind of grab this reference again. Trying to keep an eye on these two in particular. Uh, and that's going to do it for our paint. So then we have occlusion dirt, dirt that's caking up in kind of our crevices. Going to get rid of this paint layer since it's not applying here. And turn this up. I'm going to turn the contrast down. I think this is exactly what we're needing to kind of pull it all together. Uh, in doing so, though, it makes me want to turn down the caked dirt a little bit maybe do an opacity of like two or three so it's barely noticeable we want this kind of dirt build up to be our main uh, dirt rust uh, this guy I believe we did a lot of custom painting on gonna delete that and we're just gonna actually go ahead and invest a bit of time into getting a nice sort of generator look so this rust is not at all what I'm going for I'm gonna want this to be some kind of AO cavity sort of rust uh, let's see if there's any default rusts that we like rust surface rust ground rust drips rust edge rust let's start with cavity rust and see if it gives us anything we like um, filling up in here which is kind of nice actually as well as some of these corners uh, I think if we turn the contrast down a lot and mess with it a little bit We might be able to get something we want this is just like our reference getting it here is not too bad um, damn that edge wear is going kind of crazy back here this is pretty extensive let me go find a reference of this again I think this will kind of be like my main go-to reference. Let's just try and emulate this this look. Uh, and if that's what we're going for, this is a little bit too much. I think we're actually not going for a cavity rust because we already have a rust occlusion up here. I think what we're trying to go for here is a surface rust, something that just lightly cakes some areas. Uh, and then we can use the occlusion rust to really drive home those those cavities, right? So, turn the contrast down, or, no, we definitely want it down. Turn the balance down. Maybe the opacity deserves to be down as well. I kind of like how that looks there. This, not so much. Uh, where else are we seeing this? 
Seen some of it build up here, which is nice. Yeah, I uh, am a fan of what this guy is doing. Uh, except for here. I'm assuming we're going to have to do a lot of painting um, throughout this, so I might as well prep our mold brush. We start to pull some of these areas back. But even even so, even without a lot of customization, the uh, the interior is not too far off what I'm what I'm wanting. Uh, rust occlusion. Now this is a bit more for those cavities. Let's see exactly what we can get out of this guy. So this is 100% edge. Uh, I, I still like what it's doing actually, like it is bringing some really nice color in here. I might just keep this. Like, I like how it's treating some of these areas. This in particular, this ring is really nice. Some of these areas are getting like a really healthy coating of rust, which is nice. Um, I'm just going to rename this to Rust edges. This is going to be rust surface. And I'm going to duplicate this guy. We can actually just hit control D. And for this guy, I'm going to call it rust AO for rust ambient occlusion, or just rust occlusion. Um, Let's just get kind of like a dust or something that's really heavily uh, in occlusion. I think there's actually, yeah, occlusion. And we can see it's really populating a lot of these areas, very similar to what our dust is doing. In fact, it might actually just be the same uh, mask as the dust itself. Can tone it down a little bit. Might just drop the opacity on it. Bring in some stuff here. It is giving us some height information that I don't like. I'm not a fan of that for the occlusion, so I'm just going to kill that off. Uh, but the the contrast between the light orange and the dark blue is really nice. Really quite a fan of that. Um, we can work our way up, and then of course we're going to be refining all of this gradient dust. So this is the one that we just made uh, very recently, like within this part. Um, I'm not sure if I want to keep this. If I do, it's going to have to be a lot higher up. Something like this. And then even then, I might add a fill layer to this. We can set this to multiply, so it's kind of blending with whatever is underneath. And then we can multiply a grunge. So we're still getting a grunge texture. Um, and a gradient together. So grunge, dirt, scratched. Uh, let's tile this a few times. And let's see if affecting the balance does anything. Yeah, we can see up here we're getting a pattern, which is really nice, not just like a Not just like a solid hunk of dirt. I'm gonna turn the contrast down. Maybe try a different grunge. Grunge dirt thin. Yeah, more sporadic, dirty, random. We're really getting this nice brushed thick uh, metal kind of look to things, especially in this area. I'm really liking that. Um, obviously, we're going to have to paint out some areas like this, for example. Like, I don't think any of this should have this gradient on it. So if I just turn this to black, I should be able to just 
chop this out of there. Really doesn't deserve it. And all in all, a lot of work is going to have to go into painting these to be a little bit more uh, what we want. Um, Right, this here, I don't know what I'm going to make this out of yet. Here it shows it as just like a metal, but we saw other reference where that wasn't really the case. It was like a, some kind of a rope or something. Like it's metal banding. I wonder if, um, we call this metal interior. I wonder if we give it the screw material, if that'll be enough variation to kind of look good. Uh, gotta make sure we mask that out. Um, I like that here for sure. This, I'm not too sure of yet. I like how it's grungier than like this metal, but we might return to it later. Uh, as for this stuff in here, the sort of bearing, uh, metal aged, since it's a bit lighter, might make a bit more sense. We can really mix and match with this stuff. I get that metal for the ring and then go back to the screws for this part. Get some color variation. Like I'm not, like I'm really not picky about this here. Uh, it's like almost impossible to see if I turn back on the frame. It's so minute, right? Um, but looking at everything textured together, it's it's definitely coming along. This has a lot of screen space, so I'm gonna want to give it some some serious attention. So let's go ahead and paint some of this stuff. But since we kind of got it all in place, I'm gonna go ahead and save. Then we can sort of adjust things a little bit more from there and do some more custom painting, uh, kind of like how we've done with some of the other materials. Um. Actually, before we do that, we can definitely afford to push some of these things a little bit further, maybe. I'm just thinking some of these, like, speckles and things could probably be cranked up a little bit more. Right, we're using Pearl and Noise for this. We found out that there's a better noise. Blue noise is better for this, so I'm going to swap that out. I'm going to turn the tiling down, actually. That might just be the better option. Oh, I said it's a 25, not 2. That's why. Really have to turn this down quite a bit. Maybe this isn't the right noise. Maybe it's too small. Pull a noise fractal, maybe. Turn the scaling way up. Yeah, like I'm cool with that actually. Start with it a bit more intense and then we can sort of paint it back as we go. I think that'll be the philosophy for most of this. Uh, really want to make sure that I get this right from the beginning, so I might want to brighten that up a little bit more. 
And I think this is a really solid foundation, actually. Let's go ahead and save and uh, start to tweak some of this stuff up a bit. Okay, let's go ahead and start cleaning this guy up a little bit. There's not too much I want to change. Like, I like how some of these edges are being treated, especially up front. Uh, typical, like, scratches uh, being a little bit too much is uh, probably something I'm going to want to fix up, though. Like I said, like, when, when something's on the inside, like, how is it going to be scratched? You really have to think about a lot of this stuff. If the outside is scratched up like crazy, sure, like there's a reason you can write that off for, but in here, like along this pole or something, like what exactly would would do something like that, right? There really shouldn't be anything unless it's like a an old rod that's been replaced uh, by an even older ro <laughs> rod. <laughs> Not sure where I was going with that. Um, springs turned out pretty nice like when you're when you're up close you can tell that something's up but when you're like here like it just looks like a spring and i feel like we're never really going to get too much closer than that can lower that a little bit some of this rust is a little overboard so that's where we're going to really tone it back i want to make sure i get the reference i want on screen this kind of really grungy rusty look of uh some of this stuff so, scratches in places where they don't belong. I guess we have a couple different scratch layers. But, let's go through, go through these one at a time. Back here, like no one's gonna see this ever, but I can't help myself. Scratches would never really occur in these little crevices. Okay, caked dirt. It's fine, like it is what it is. Uh, all right, we got these scratches. I'll let them be. We can move our way up to occlusion dirt. I think it's doing a great job just the way it is. Surface rust. Um, that's this kind of stuff. All in all, I think it's doing a pretty good job. Uh, hopefully it's not crashing right now. Just going to tone it in a little should probably be on the paint layer to do that i just want it to be like a warm fuzz to the edges uh, i don't want this to affect height though i'm going to turn that off what else is this doing All right pretty much very minimal places i just want this to be like a warm patch more than anything. And I kind of like when it's like a gradation, you know, mainly in one spot. There's some kind of speckle or something I'm really not liking here. Is it this? Yeah, it is. Okay, it is the speckle. Um, I think it's just tiling way too much. Yeah, I'm going to get the tile way lower and then just crank it down. Yeah, just a, a little bit too crazy if you ask me. Um, where were we? Rust, right. Gonna tone some of this back, but then also bring some of it back in. Very subtle level to it. Cool with that. On this side, are we getting anything? Like that, sure, it's fine. 
Uh, very subtle surface for us there. I'm cool with here. Once again, it's super subtle, so I'm okay with it. I just don't want it to be crazy uh, overboard or anything. These little areas, let's see. Yeah, I'm cool with that. We got edge rust. This is the big boy that's probably going to take the most amount of time to clean up. Can add a paint layer here. So he's doing some really cool stuff like this and this. This as well I'm okay with. Uh, if we look in here, it's a little much. Um, I don't want to get rid of all of it. But it's uh, definitely making itself a little too comfortable in some of these spots. I still think that's one of the tamer areas. I think we're getting rings here, which is okay. Uh, I don't like the height information it's really giving off. So I can really reel this back. This, I like it on a fundamental level, like subtly it's really nice, but it's just way too much on some of these smaller bits. Like especially down here, you don't want it to look really generated and obvious. So really just having to be more of an accent than kind of like the main course, right? Okay, rust on the spring, I don't mind it being here actually, even the tip can tone it down a bit. This whole area is going to need a little bit of work, I, I don't mind how rusty it is actually, but just the paint chipping uh, is going to need to pass, I think it's gone a little, a little crazy in some areas. This area is fine. Yeah, the amount of paint chipping there is in some places is a bit much. These guys need a lot of work to be toned down a little bit. Still want some of that orange in there, but key part of that is some, right? You don't want it to be too overpowering like you see it at the edges you see it in the crevices but it's just not the main color right and it's okay in, in game art to be exaggerating this stuff a little bit but you know at this point it's a little bit past exaggerating This stuff I think looks, uh, it looks nice, but realistically it's a little much. It's a nice like highlight and accent, so I'm, I'm cool with that. These edges would get a bit more rusty because of how fine they are and how things could get trapped in there. Uh, but still, once again, just, just too much of a good thing, right? Uh, the edge... I like it. I like having that stuff have a bit more 
of the rust to it. Um, from a distance, it's looking really fresh. This I'm liking actually quite a bit, just the way it is. Not going to touch that. Same with this. I like how the edge are getting some rusty trims to it. That's fine. Uh, what else did we affect? Some of these pipes back here. No need to have a bunch of rust on these guys, right? This might be rust surface back here, yeah. No need for that. These parts... The scratch is a bit obvious, isn't it? Uh, gonna want to get rid of that since this is kind of like a repeating part. I don't want it to be too noticeable. Yeah, these guys are repeating, so I'm going to try and just keep them as bland as they can be. These guys are very dusty for some reason. The gradient dust is uh, getting all over them. Not quite sure what that's all about. Gonna pull that way back. Same with this one. We've got a few of these guys, so same treatment across the board, really. And I think this is the the last one, actually. I'm liking the dust getting caught in there, the rust. Um, yeah, there's a lot of paint peeling that we're going to have to kind of fix up on this. Like right, right across here. Let's go back and do that now. Paint. Uh, we'll add a paint layer to that. Set it back to white. And let's find some areas that are getting chipped a little bit too much. These bars are a good example paint them back in. There's really no reason for there to be big chips here. I don't mind some of them, but stuff like this just looks like a weird generation error. I don't mind if it's patterns like this. Like, that's fine. Um, stuff like this, though, was a little... It's just a little bit too much going on. So I kind of want to bring some back. Same here. It's just too uniform. And as soon as you see this stuff, it's just it just screams like auto generated, right? So really trying to pull that back. I think we missed an area of actually masking this. Yeah. Uh, let's get back to the paint. Like this should have paint chips, but just very subtly. And it just happened to be in a group where, um, you know, we're trying to affect a lot of things at once. It's hard to, to sell it on everything. These guys kind of got the, the short end of the stick. So I'm still using this mold brush. Um, it's very subtle. That's just why I like it. it. Brings things in slowly, gives us a lot of control. It does take a little bit longer, but I think that's a good trade-off because it still lets us have some damage to it. But we just have a lot more control. Uh, here... Like it's a big strip of damage, but it's also only in one area, so I don't I don't mind it as much. Um, and then I think kind of the main issues come from the back here at this point. Way too uniform with the scratches. I don't mind this. 
maybe tone it down a little bit but like some of these edges we'll have to come back to fix the rust on this as well But, yeah, like here is just unacceptably uniform. Like I'm not trying to get rid of it all, just tone it down in some areas and keep it in others. And I think we're getting a really solid look with this. Let's go to our rust edges, which as uh, we just went over, it's a little bit much in kind of this uh, back area. I still like it being very present back here. I just don't want it to be like these big chunking straight lines, right? Okay, we're pretty much getting there. Let me bring back a little bit of paint here. A little bit here at the bottom. Do our rust edges. Pull back some of that. Just really toning down these effects. Not bad. Seems like we didn't catch these inside pieces. And toning down the rust, especially in the middle. If it's like around some some crevices, I'm more cool with that. But definitely get it to chill a little bit and I'm assuming yeah this side Okay, I don't have it on completely black because I still like adding a little bit of rust here. I'm still a fan of the variation. It was just a little overboard, but I think that's tonally what we're going for. I like the matteness, the color variation. Uh, rust surface, maybe. I can push that a little bit more. And one thing I'm noticing with these is we're getting some of these splotchy bits on everything. I think that could be our um, caked dirt. We might be able to push that a little bit more. Maybe if we made it a little bit of a warmer tone. Maybe crunch the contrast a little bit more. Turn down the balance.
some of the distribution is not exactly how I like it. Let's see if we can find a different grunge. It's more splotchy. Muddy, maybe? Or is that what we were <laughs> is that what we were already using? Uh let's give this a shot. It's got a lot of lights and darks. Not like in this big area. Hmm. It's always hard to, hard to find like the perfect one. I don't want it to be too black and white, kind of like a nice gray, so it's easier to get exactly what we want. This one says a rock, but I kind of was digging how it goes about its grunge distribution. It's very noisy. I like that. Maybe turn the tiling down a little bit so it's bigger. Bigger blobs. It's matching the reference a little bit more. Maybe desaturate it a little bit. Kind of increasing the speckles a little bit more, getting a little bit more of that surfacey damage into things. Oh, we totally forgot about this front area. Uh, let's give it the the love that it deserves here. I uh, don't want it to completely lose its edge wear, but just have it be more specific and targeted edge wear. Uh, and then this, yeah, it's this edge rust that is just going real far on this guy. Turn that down. Just really tone a lot of that back. The scratch here. Don't want that there. Does it make sense for it to be scratching up multiple rims? Just, just trying to apply logic and uh, painting these these layers accordingly. Now, we also have these big edges here. Uh, I'm gonna paint in the metal again, or the paint for the metal. Bring that back. This is going to be Rust AO, if I had to guess, or Rust Surface. Really, Rust Edges is causing this. It's very, very powerful, I guess. Just tone that back with a much larger scale brush. Um, yeah, maybe get some dirt. Add a paint layer to this guy. Maybe we could paint in some dirt here. A 
Maybe just a little lower on the opacity. Paint some in. Tone it down. Once again, this area got hit pretty hard with the damage. So let's just keep it on like one side maybe. Uh, we've got a scratch in the corner there. It doesn't really make any sense. So let's go grab that scratch layer, tone it down. And yeah, those interior pieces are looking pretty good. I guess some of this stuff could probably be cleaned up a little bit. This is the speckle layer. I suppose we uh, could add a paint to that and get rid of some of them if they're getting a little out of control. This here, I think, is the paint layer. And sort of paint that back in a little bit more. But there isn't too, too much more I want to want to add here. Um, other than just sort of cleaning up some stuff. So uh, at this point, you guys kind of know my my philosophy on that. I don't really like having to to record all of that uh, if I'm not really going over anything new. This area here is caked dirt. And a paint layer. It's just the pattern I'm not liking. So I'm just going to paint with like a kind of grayish brush. Maybe not all of it. Maybe just kind of like the top. This is a little, a little much. I want to just tone that back a little bit. And then since there's so much rust in these areas, it might just make sense to, for the screws, for the AO dirt layer, just kind of like in some of the areas that have a bit more rust, build up some more AO dirt. Like here, should probably have more of a warm tone to it, right? Something in here. Really caking around some of the edges. This creeping from the edges and around, like the middle would be a lot less likely to have it, but the edges would pick it up a lot quicker. I think this is way too clean to be in this rusty of an area. Can have some fun with it here. Uh, it might just be a little bit too too rusty. I like some of it, but just not going crazy, right? As you've seen, I've probably made it <laughs> clear that I can get kind of carried away with uh, some of the effects, right? And it's going to hit a autosave. Um, we have been at it for a while here. Um, we've covered a lot of ground. Um, I am wondering if we should stop it here or keep going. Like, I, I don't mind having like a really long part, and the reason that is is because, like I said at the start, I, I really do want to wrap this up, and the amount of time it takes to edit between each video is uh, definitely quite a bit. So I'd rather just be able to to have more longer sessions uh, so there's less editing time less rendering time so uh, maybe maybe we will just power through this um, not all the way to the end but 
maybe to the point where we just sort of have the front plate and some some cleanup to do that might be kind of a a good place to to leave it um I want to say that we should be able to wrap this up in just a, a handful of parts, right? So I don't want to keep this this going any longer than it has to. Um, but I, I do know for sure that <laughs> this is going to be probably one of the longest parts in the entire tutorial course, just sort of based on, um, uh, well, there was like a cut in the middle of this um, where we crashed, but just looking at the time right now we're already kind of approaching like an hour 20 plus there's another 40 minutes on top so we're already at like two hours i think um but I, I say we keep going a little bit longer maybe not another full hour but i'm gonna keep this going a little bit so yeah let's go ahead and let this do its thing let's let it save out and uh regroup and start up in just a moment again so i'll be right back okay so let's keep going uh, one of the things I want to do is I think our rust is in a pretty healthy spot, but I'm seeing a lot more caked on dirt and stuff. And I think we could probably afford to put in one more, um, one more layer where we just sort of add in some, some rust or not some rust, some, some lighter dirt, uh, similar to, Sorry, this is our screws layer, similar to our, occlusion dirt, but like take it to another level, like let's try and control D to duplicate this guy. Or right click. And I just kind of want to uh, maybe have it be a bit more yellow, uh, a little less opacity, but then just really kind of push it a bit further. And crash. Okay, well, it's a good thing we saved. And uh, you know what? Maybe that's a sign to call it a day for here. Um, I'll do some tweaking with it. If I find something I like, I will show you guys in the next part. Um, but honestly, it takes a while to reload all the stuff and do all that. So I'm just going to call it. Uh, I'll tweak some layers off of camera. Just masks, really. And then I'll uh, show you guys what I was up to in the, the next part. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, I'm glad we saved when we did. <laughs> And I'll catch you in the next part of the tutorial. All right. See you guys.